An alleged burglar shot by a homeowner, and police say it's not the first time they've caught this guy breaking into someone's house. KOET Action 7 News reporter Mike Springer is live at Unum H with tonight's big story. Mike. Yeah, Glenn Bransford is here recovering tonight less than 24 hours after Albuquerque police say he tried to break into a man's home, and that homeowner then shot him. Now, police say this isn't the first time they've caught Bransford trying to break into somebody's home. In fact, just a few months ago, Santa Fe police say they caught him doing the exact same thing, but this time it was a woman who was home. 34-year-old Glenn Bransford is no stranger to Santa Fe police. They say he's a known burglar. He's somebody that the pawn stores are familiar with in the area, that we as officers in the police department are familiar with. This week, police say Bransford struck again, but this time in Albuquerque. Investigators say he broke into this house on Thursday. The homeowner was there, and he shot Bransford. Santa Fe police say the same thing happened back in May. This time, they say Bransford broke into a house when a woman was home alone. We had located the suspect, which turned out to be Mr. Bransford. He had burglary tools in his possession, a flashlight, gloves, and um, I think a crowbar. Now, Bransford is recovering from that gunshot wound he took here in Albuquerque this week. The homeowner who shot him on Thursday is not charged. Albuquerque police have now turned their attention to Bransford's wife. They say she was the getaway driver in his latest burglary attempt and fled the scene after her husband was shot. If anybody sees her, anybody knows where she might be, um, call police immediately because it's just not a situation that we want a civilian dealing with. No, we did speak to the homeowner involved in yesterday's break-in. He did not want to go on camera, but he appeared to be doing okay. Reporting live from Northeast Albuquerque, Mike Springer, KOAT Action 7 News. Now, police say that burglar was in critical condition, but will likely live. Homeowner shoots an intruder while another is on the loose following a home invasion in Clovis. This happened Wednesday night on the 2500 block of North Ross. Police say they found 24-year-old Roderick Cordova with a gunshot wound. He is currently in critical condition. Now, the homeowner was not injured. Meanwhile, the one who allegedly got away is this man. Police have issued an arrest warrant for 21-year-old Skylar Romero. Both men are facing charges of aggravated assault and burglary, as well as aggravated assault and burglary for Skylar Romero. The F no charges are expected against a Fayetteville man who shot an armed intruder inside his home last night. The suspect remains in the hospital. Police say the man forced two women inside the home during an attempted robbery. Brian Mims is live in Fayetteville this evening with details. Brian? Pam, it came into the Fayetteville Police Department as a breaking and entering call. But as they were responding, police received another call about a man going to a fire station with gunshot wounds. Turned out to be their suspect. It happened at this house on Decatur Drive, the one with the children's bikes and basketball goal out front. 11.30 Sunday night, two women were sitting outside, smoking. Police say that's when a man with a gun walked into the yard and forced them inside, intending to rob them. One of the, the victims fell to the ground. Uh, the other one sort of uh, ran down the hallway, so the, the suspect was kind of confused. Police spokesman Dan Grubb says a man who lives in the home came out of a bedroom with his shotgun. He says the resident shot the intruder twice in his side. The two women were not hurt. The man dropped the gun, police say, and ran out. Another man drove the would-be robber here to the Bonnie Doon Fire Department next to a police substation for help. I don't know whether he was waiting outside for him or whether it was up the street. That I'm not certain. But uh, they called and let us know that they were bringing him to the fire department. 27-year-old Armin Leroy Maddox was sent to UNC hospitals. He's expected to face kidnapping and assault charges. 27-year-old Kendall Leon Wortham, the man police say drove him to the fire station, is charged with having cocaine. Both men have been in trouble with the law before. Police say the shooter, 36-year-old Mikey DeShannon Campbell, was acting in self-defense and will not be charged. The homeowner has no time to sit back and debate whether or not the guy is serious or, or what his intentions are, if the gun's real, if it's not real. You know, he doesn't have that kind of time. We tried to speak with a resident today who shot the intruder, but nobody answered the door at his home. Police say the suspect remains in the hospital tonight with what they call non-life-threatening injury. Spam. All right, then, Brian. Brian Mims, live in Fayetteville. Thank you. Police swarm this Ferndale home after shots are fired during a break-in, and it was the bad guys on the receiving end of the gunfire.
It tops our news at 5.30. The homeowner happens to be an Iraq war vet. Says he heard noises, so grabbed his gun. When he saw robbers in his home, he opened fire. And that's them running from the house on Edgewood Place. And the homeowner spoke with our Chauncey Glover tonight. The intruders use this chair right here to get to the window trying to break in. But Dupree Smith was inside lying on the couch. He heard all the noise and sprang to action. I heard like some movement in, in the back room and my father, he goes to work at six in the morning. You know, I was asleep when he left, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure he, he went to work. So Smith picked up his gun. So I opened the door and I heard the shatter and I just seen like the silhouette, like, like somebody was like trying to come through. That was his first instinct. He's a retired vet, did a tour of Iraq back in 08, so he's trained to shoot. Reached for the door, his bedroom door, the window shattered, and that's when I fired. Two rounds, the intruder ran. Smith ran to the front door. There's the car sitting in my driveway, and then I fired at the car, and he took off down the street. Police are searching for the suspects. In the meantime, Dupree has a positive outlook on what happened. He wasn't even supposed to be home, but since the Tigers won last night's game, he partied all night long and stayed at home from work. Things happen for a reason, so you know, there's a lot of older people and single moms and stuff on the street, so they could have went in there and did a lot more than them, so they, it's probably best they did mess with somebody like me because I'm not buying it. Got some new information on that breaking news from Sand Springs. Police there have identified the home intruder who was shot and killed by the homeowner. Two Works For You reporter Giselle Puente is live from the scene off North Franklin with the latest developments. Giselle. Well, so Scott, about 15 minutes ago, OSBI detectives and police cleared the scene here. They were looking for any evidence inside the home. Sand Springs police confirmed the identity of the man who was shot and killed inside as he was trying to break in as 37 year old James Edward Patterson. Officials are looking for the man who broke into a home on the east side of Cleveland. That person met by the homeowner who had a gun. The homeowner shot him and the person took off. The now's Jennifer all joins us live right now. And Jennifer, you just talked exclusively exclusively with that homeowner. I did, Denise, and I have to say he is a very brave man. His name is Eddie Henderson, and he says, surprisingly, he's doing just fine and that he's just glad he was able to take matters into his own hands. 26-year-old Eddie Henderson told us he was in the bathroom at around noon today when he heard some loud noises in another room. Going to my mother's room, opening drawers, slamming door, drawers. Eddie says he snuck out quietly. I went down in the basement, grabbed my pistol. Eddie described being face-to-face -face with the burglar in the hallway. Then the burglar ran to hide in the bathroom, his face looking a little too familiar. I know him from somewhere. The burglar apparently recognized Eddie too because he said, I didn't know it was you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, inside the bathroom. Eddie says he shot the man in the shoulder, but he still got away through the bathroom window. However, Eddie says he's hopeful police will catch him. They got blood everywhere, so it's blood in the house and everything like that, so they got his DNA. The takeaway? Eddie says he's just thankful he was prepared this time because this is the second time his house has been burglarized. First time when I was a kid, but this time I can actually do something about it because I'm licensed to carry. So. Now here is Eddie's advice. He says everyone should have a plan in place like he did just in case because Things like this could happen to anyone. Live in the east side of Cleveland, I'm Jennifer Ah reporting for The Now Cleveland. Breaking news in Dallas where police say a homeowner shot a man this morning. This happened in the 2200 block of Greer Street in southern Dallas and crews just cleared the scene. NBC5's Ellen Bryan is outside the house right now. What can you tell us, Ellen? Christy, we've been talking with police out here and they're still getting us more information. They say that two people live here, a couple has lived here for some time, and the homeowner shot an intruder just a couple hours ago. The person who was shot, that man went running from the house and you can see his path because there's still some blood on the sidewalk and in the street. He ran down the sidewalk, crossed over the street, and then just around the corner collapsed. And that is where when crews came out, they picked him up from there and took him to the hospital. Right now, we are still working to get a condition update on how he is doing. Police again working on that for us, but we have seen some photos. They're too graphic for TV, but as the man was there, it looked like he was shot at least twice. Uh, so again, working on getting a condition update for him. We have talked to people who work at this church that's across the street. They say that is common to have break-ins. That van that's in their parking lot, someone tried to steal that not too long ago. I've also gone up to this homeowner's house to knock on the door. Right now, they are not coming to the door to answer any questions.
live at 5. It was a violent start to the day for a local family as armed suspects burst into their home while the family was having breakfast. It was around 4.30 this morning when deputies say the suspects barged into the home near Hockley. Now one of those suspects is dead, the other on the run. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Holloway is live near the home and has more on this story. Jessica? Well, that family right now is working with investigators to try to track down those suspects. It's no word yet, but the family very shaken up. A mother inside this home spends the morning begging for her life and the lives of her grandchildren. Gunmen broke through the front door during breakfast. People who live in this community cannot believe how things are changing. I remember when there was four or five driveways, <laughs> you know, along this road and some dairies, you know, when I was small. Investigators interview the victims in their front yard. The family is shaken up and the community on edge. Even when you move all the way out here, crime seems to follow. It's just the influx of people coming out and getting out of town, you know, trying to buy them a small piece of property or something. Now, the medical examiner just arrived on scene. We're waiting for a chance to get more information to speak to that family. Meanwhile, the search continues for that suspect. Reporting live, Jessica Holloway, 13 Eyewitness News. First, a breaking news alert out of Southwest Houston. A confrontation between a suspected intruder and a homeowner ends with the intruder dead. Channel 2's Mark Boyle is live on the scene for us at Hillcroft and Blue Ridge Drive. Mark, what did police say happened at this apartment? And the investigators say a man who lives here at the crossings at Hillcroft Apartments near Blue Ridge was inside of his apartment about an hour and a half ago or so. All of a sudden, he heard some commotion at the door. And then seconds later, police say that intruder used a crowbar to open the door. Here's some video from the scene. Once that man forced the door open, investigators say the man who lives at this property was able to get his gun and he shot and killed the would-be burglar in this case after the shooting investigators say the suspect tried to run away but because of his injuries he collapsed about 10 to 15 yards later right now his body is still here on scene covered in a sheet uh, in a grassy area in between two buildings at this apartment complex on the southwest side. Investigators are telling us the man who pulled the trigger, the resident here, will not face any charges because he was protecting his property. The names of those involved have not yet been released. We are waiting for homicide investigators to come outside of the complex here to speak with us to give us some more information. So as of right now, again, it appears that the homeowner was protecting his property and shot and killed the suspect in this case. For reporting live on the southwest side this afternoon, I'm Mark Boyle, KPRC, Channel 2 News. When is it okay to use force to shoot someone in self-defense? Well, that's a question Atlanta police are looking at very closely tonight after a man in his 50s was shot by a homeowner in southwest Atlanta. It was 7.30 this morning when the homeowner confronted the man outside his house on Connell Avenue. Police are not identifying the man who lives in the home with his wife. The suspect was on his property despite the fact that the house is surrounded by a fence and the gate to the couple's driveway is padlocked. Police say in order to justify shooting a person, someone would have to feel that their life or someone else's life was in danger. Now, just two days ago, someone broke into the same home while the couple was there. A subject uh, broke into that house, uh, which also put the homeowners in, in fear of their lives. Do you so, think it was the same intruder? From based today? on the information that uh, that we were originally given during that break-in, it is very possible that this is the same individual. The homeowner was questioned by police and released until they complete their investigation and try to determine if the shooting was just a burglary in progress in your home. How would you react? Well, tonight, another instance where a Valley homeowner pulls the trigger after coming face to face with a crook. ABC 15's Allison Rodriguez is live near 35th Avenue in Peoria. And uh, Allison, how was the homeowner doing tonight? Well, the homeowner appears to be fine. He did ask us not to shoot in front of his home, so out of courtesy for him, we did move down the street. But this is the neighborhood near 35th Avenue and Dunlap where the incident went down. Most residents we spoke to said they've really never had any trouble here.
When I came home and I saw like all, you know, all the commotion and everything, that's when I realized everything was happening. Nikolai Tranchev says his Phoenix neighborhood is usually quiet, but not today. Cops everywhere, you know, it was, the lights were everywhere, there was helicopters everywhere. That's because according to police, a man tried to break into this home by throwing a rock into a glass door. When the homeowner heard what was going on, he reached for his gun and shot the would-be burglar. Wow, like... That could have been like my house. The suspect, a 44-year-old white man, ran away after being shot. Shortly after, someone checked into a nearby hospital with gunshot wounds. That's when police learned he may not have acted alone. Also a female uh, who we believe drove him from this neighborhood over to uh, the hospital. Phoenix police say the homeowner was within his rights to defend himself with a firearm, and this incident now has his neighbor thinking twice about getting one. Now it's really starting to make me think to go out and go buy one because if we didn't have a gun, then, you know, these people would obviously have probably hurt us or took something of us, and, you know, that's not okay. Well, last we spoke to police, the suspect was listed in critical but stable condition. Police aren't releasing his name yet until he's arrested and booked after the crime, or excuse me, for the crime. And they're also not releasing any information yet about that female alleged accomplice. Yeah, I think anybody puts themselves in that position. What would you do when faced with that situation? Thanks so much, Allison. Uh, a homeowner forced to open fire on a stranger, he says, threatened him and tried to break into his home. ABC 15, the first on scene this morning at the house near 35th Avenue in Indian School. ABC 15's Angie Holdsworth explains what happened before he opened fire. The homeowner here is an elderly man, we're told, who's actually on oxygen. He was inside his home when he went to go check out some noise in the backyard and he saw a young man trying to break in. Police say the homeowner went to get his gun and told that man that he was armed and asked him to leave. The homeowner told police that that man continued to try to get in and made some kind of a threat. That's when the homeowner shot him. That suspect tried to run and jumped over the fence and ended up collapsing in the alley. The suspect was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Now, this appears to be a case of self-defense. However, the police will continue to investigate this thoroughly just to assure that no charges are merited. In Phoenix, Angie Holdsworth, ABC 15 News. At home with his 12-year-old sister when burglars try to break in. That's when investigators say the boy grabbed his dad's assault rifle and started shooting. And he hit one of the men repeatedly. This all unfolded this afternoon in the 2600 block of Royal Place Court. 11 News reporter Sharon Min Chow talked with neighbors and investigators. Anxious family and friends crossed the yellow tape into a surreal crime scene. A 15-year-old boy and his 12-year-old sister had been home alone in the Mount Royal Village subdivision. And at about 2.30, a pair of home invaders tried the front and back doors, then broke a back window. A young boy was protecting his sister. You know, he was in fear for his life and, and for his sister's life. The brother grabbed his father's assault rifle and knew what to do with it. His dad is a Precinct 1 deputy constable. We don't try to hide things from our children in law enforcement. The children were not hurt. The home invaders fled, leaving a trail of blood. Two suspects showed up at Tombow Hospital. One, the adult, had multiple gunshot wounds and was flown to Memorial Hermann Hospital. The second, a juvenile, was taken back here. Detectives walked the suspect through the crime scene. Meantime, neighbors say burglars had recently struck the two houses next door, which included the deputy's home. They stole everything, what they have inside. They really did it one time. And this may be the last time, at least for these suspects. In Northwest Terrace County, Sherman Chow, 11 News. Melanie Lawson, only on 13's Live at 5. I'm going to see reporter Jeff Ealing live, and apparently one of the robbers was hit by the gunfire, Jeff, right? Yeah, that's right, and it was found at a local hospital. Two other suspects, however, Tom, are still on the run this morning. This all happening as the homeowner was returning home from work. Houston police say three men forced their way into the man's home. Inside the home, the man's wife and two young children, ages five and six years old. The homeowner was pistol whipped. His family forced to lie on the floor at gunpoint. The men then tried to rob the victim, but police say at some point, this homeowner was able to get out his own gun and defend his family. Police say that there was an exchange of gunfire. The suspects then drove off in a pickup truck. That truck was abandoned in an apartment complex about a mile away on West Montgomery Road. It is riddled with bullet holes. About 30 minutes later, we received a report of a male at the hospital off 249 that had been shot. 
Uh, we believe it's a suspect from this shooting. He's been transported to uh, Memorial Harmon in critical condition, but he is expected to survive. So the victim, his wife, and two children, they are okay, but as you heard, one of those suspects was shot. He is in custody. The other two still on the run. It is believed that those other two suspects may have driven that third suspect to the hospital, where, again, he is in custody in critical condition. Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, 13, Eyewitness News. Off. A valley man grabs his gun and opens fire after waking up to find somebody broken into his home. ABC 15's Katie Connors live tonight uh, near 43rd Avenue in Bethany Home. And Katie, first of all, do police believe this homeowner was specifically targeted in this case? Well, Katie, that's not what they're trying to figure out right now. As you can see, police is still on scene, a very active scene here right now. Crime tape still up. Now, the 77 year old man who lives inside the home says that just yesterday his home was bur burglarized, and now police are trying to figure out if they're all connected. It was just after 3 this morning when a man broke into this home in West Phoenix. I don't know how or what's going to happen now. Two men were sleeping inside. One of them woke up to a strange noise. Once he realized that sound was an intruder, he grabbed his shotgun. Boom. And then all the dogs just started barking. The whole neighborhood did. Police say the intruder was shot once and was pronounced dead at the scene. Jeffrey Gabriel lives a couple houses down. He says he was afraid to come outside. To me, it was like, I want to make sure my family's safe first and foremost. Detectives say this is the suspect's pickup truck. A few hours after the shooting, his dad came to take it away. Neighbors like Gabriel stood by and tried to make sense of what happened. My attitude is, it happened. I feel bad for the family that lost him. I feel bad for uh, my neighbor because he's got to live with the fact he killed somebody, but he was making his stuff. I can't, I can't judge him for that. Again, the police don't know right now if the suspects from today is the same that happened to burglarize the home yesterday. Detectives say that the interview and also the gunshot wound match the um, self-defense method that they've been investigating all day long. Meanwhile, Katie, even though right now the um, homeowner, homeowner isn't facing any charges, however, the case is still being handed over to the county attorney's office. Yeah, two break-ins in two days. This will be interesting. It sounds like a lot of uh, loose ends in this case still. Thank you, Katie. Developing late tonight, in just the past 20 minutes, we have learned a suspected burglar has died after breaking into the wrong home in Littleton. That home belonged to a cop. Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen's at that home on South Spotswood Street. Jacqueline, we've learned a lot of new information this evening. That's right, Littleton police officers who are working here late into the night just confirmed that the homeowner is a Denver police officer and that the man that he shot has died tonight. Now, we talked to several neighbors who say if it's true that that man was a burglar breaking into the home, he picked the wrong house. That's a quiet neighborhood. Gunshots pierced the quiet here this afternoon as police set up a perimeter and neighbors worry about their safety. I just want to make sure there's not somebody around still we got to worry about. Got a house full of kids for a birthday party tonight, so a little wild. Inside this house, sources tell Denver 7 the homeowner, an off-duty Denver police officer, was sleeping in the basement when he heard someone breaking into his home. When the person had broken into the residence, the homeowner got up. He encountered the suspect at the top of the stairwell, and then he ended up shooting him. First responders found a man in his 40s shot inside and rushed him to the hospital. Colorado was one of the first states to enact a make my day law, giving homeowners immunity if they shoot intruders if they feel threatened. Luckily, you know, he was a cop and he does have a firearm and was able to protect himself on like a lot of, a lot of things that are going on right now. And so far tonight, police have not released the name of the man who died or the name of the homeowner. Now, initial reports were that there was a second suspect, a second intruder, who got away. But police say they canvassed the neighborhood, cleared the area, and they couldn't confirm that. They never found anyone, but they say the neighborhood is in, in no immediate threat now. Reporting live, Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. All right, Jacqueline, thank you. Alleged burglar is in the hospital right now after he got shot while committing the crime in Delaware. Police say it was the homeowner who shot him after she caught him red handed. Chad Perdelli is working out of our Delaware newsroom today. He is live in Stanton where this all happened early this morning. Chad. I guess the message here is a burglar beware. Watch where you lay your head. Delaware State Police say a man broke into this home. You see behind me 6 a.m. A pistol homeowner found him and that burglar got shot.
The female homeowner and her adult son, shown here with investigators, made the startling discovery just before 6 a.m. A man was sleeping in the upstairs bedroom of their house on the 1900 block of West Newport Pike. The male subject woke up. Um, there was a physical confrontation between the female homeowner, her son, and the, uh, and the male subject. Investigators say the woman pulled out a gun and shot the burglar in the lower body. He fled on foot, setting off a massive search by ground and air. He left a trail of blood and officers found him a short time later. Hey, all, all better for <laughs> it's all. Somebody's going to break in my house. I'd want to do the same thing, you know. You, you know, you protect yourself. Do what you can do. What I hear is that, that people were breaking in, taking stuff, and even partying in the in the place. Police confirm the house has been broken into several times. Neighbors say the mother and son weren't living at the house as they renovated it, but often arrived to do work in the early morning hours. Police are still conducting interviews and haven't yet determined if the shooting was justified. If she was there and try and, and said, "Oh, somebody just came in. I'm going to I'm going to protect myself with this gun." Yeah. Then I can understand that why she'd have a gun. Moments ago, Delaware State Police identified that suspect. He's 21-year-old Gregory Alexander. I'm told he is homeless and will face burglary charges. As for that pistol-packing homeowner, we're told she was she legally possessed and could carry that firearm. I'm live in Stanton, Delaware. Chad Perdelli, Channel 6 Action News. Man allegedly tried to break into a home in East Louisville, and one of them was shot and killed by the homeowner. As WDRB's Fallon Glick explains, the woman had her gun ready when she noticed some suspicious activity outside. Fallon? Lindsay David, this home behind me is where it all happened. I'm told the woman who lives here shot one of the intruders and another one got away. Now about 30 minutes before this all happened, the homeowner noticed a suspicious car parked outside her home across the street here on Northumberland Road near Westport Road. So that's when she called her son who was at the gym and told him two people were trying to break in. The son tells us someone was rattling the front door and another was trying to get in through a back window. I guess she waited in the hallway and then finally uh, they busted the back window out and that's when she stepped out of the hallway and let one shot go. She hit somebody and I mean obviously she got him. Louisville police say the man who was shot was deceased when they arrived on scene. Even though the homeowner is okay, the son says the whole incident has her shaken. He adds he's thankful he had his mom learn how to shoot a gun and purchase one about a year and a half ago because the outcome could have been much different here today. Now, police tell us the homicide unit is investigating to determine whether this shooting was justifiable. Reporting live from East Louisville, Fallon Glick, WDRB News.